Jester Brown is an award-winning Canadian cartoonist and graphic novelist whose work is candid, graphic, and provocative. When you think of comics, if Charlie Brown, Doonesbury, Dagwood, or Archie and Veronica come to mind, Brown will take you out of your comfort zone and introduce you to Brown-style cartoons. His newest work is about prostitution, romantic love, and being a John. He calls it Paying For It. It is my pleasure to welcome Chester Brown to Studio 4 to tell us more. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Fanny. So have you told your stepmother about this book yet? I still haven't. I, when I get home, I've got to phone her. I guess she might listen to the radio or watch yeah. a few television shows and find out. It's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, how did this begin? The idea of writing about this. The idea of writing about it. Um, well, I, I was coming to the end of my last book, and I had to had to do another one. And so, since this was what I was doing in my personal life, and I'd done some autobiographical books before, it made sense. And mm -hmm. plus, I'm very committed to. Um, well, I see prostitution as a, as a sexual rights issue, and, and I think it should be, um, uh, that we should be thinking about prostitution mm -hmm. in a different way. And talking about it in a different way. Uh, it's a choice issue, it's a rights issue, it's a women's issue, and it's a men's issue in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, Happy Chester Brown, mm -hmm. with girlfriend, uh, in a relationship, four years, monogamous, uh, something like that. Something like that. You don't have to tell area. me everything. <laughs> but in a relationship, yeah. committed relationship, yes. with somebody we all know, or most of us know, su or know of. Yes. Su uh, su Ian Lee, uh, who now has a radio show on CBC. Yeah. Called Definitely Not the not, Opera. Definitely Not the Opera. And mm. for many years was a BJ on Much Music. Yes. Yeah. How did you meet? Uh, she. Uh, she used to have a band called uh, Bob's Your Uncle, and they would tour across the country, and she had read my work and was really into it. So uh, she arrived in Toronto and uh, uh, got in contact with me, and one thing led to another, and we were, uh, next thing I knew, I was actually living back here in, in Vancouver. Uh, and so we lived together for several years, and mm -hmm. then the Much Music job came up, and we moved to Toronto, and um, yeah, at, at a certain point, <laughs> uh, the relationship went a bit asunder. But you stayed uh, I'm living not sure. in the same the, place. The, Tell the me the story. The relationship changed. I changed. mean, she uh, uh, she developed uh, feelings for another guy, and and decided. Uh, well, essentially, she broke up with me, but we remained really good friends. And we still remain really good friends. She's actually back out here now in Vancouver, and mm. I'm while I'm here, I'm staying with her. Um, but <laughs> it sounds so civilized. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very civilized. Mm -hmm. uh, Sukin's a great person. And, but um, so um, yeah, she broke up with me, and I realized that even though I really loved Sukin. I hadn't been happy being a boyfriend with her or with my previous girlfriends, and but so I didn't want to, I didn't want to get another girlfriend, but I didn't want to be celibate, so I decided to start paying for sex. Mm. And tell me about uh, the first time you did that. Uh, obviously, a little maybe not, but I'm thinking a little trepidation. Oh, not I quite was, sure where to go, who to see. Yeah, I was very nervous. Uh, I picked up. Uh, one of the alternative weeklies and, you know, was looking at the, the escort ads in the back. Um, and you don't know who to call. There, there are all these ads with phone numbers and you can't see the person and um, you have no idea what they're like. Um, and I was paranoid that, well, I, you know, I called someone and, and made an appointment, um, but I was paranoid that there might be guys at the apartment. Uh, well, I, I went to, to, to her place. Um, I was, you know, worried that there might be guys there who might mug me or beat me up or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what, 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 what you're walking into. Um, but it turned out to be a very positive experience. Uh, she was a very nice person and um, confirmed for me that this was a viable 
way of uh, satisfying that need. Mm -hmm. And when you told your friends, and you did out yourself. Oh yeah, uh, I, uh, I'm not a secretive person and. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to have my sex life, which is a big part of a person's life, mm -hmm. be uh, a secret from, uh, to keep that side of myself secret from my friends and, and most of my family. Um, so yeah, I was totally open immediately with, with well, I, the, probably the first person I told was Sukin. Mm -hmm. And uh, that yeah. was generous. <laughs> yes, no, I think it's important if you have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, what, did she understand it? She did. She, um, she was a little bit surprised, but mm -hmm. um, no, she, she accepted that, I mean, she knew me and she knew that I wasn't, I guess because she accepted the sort of person I was and knew that I wasn't, because so many people see Johns as being evil monsters or exploiters or whatever, mm -hmm. but she knew that that wasn't the sort of right. person I was. So and some Johns are exploiters. Some Johns are not nice people, definitely. This is true. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, uh, a libertarian, alternative cartoonist, a uh, talented guy, uh, did you have rules for yourself? you would not pick up a girl on the street, you would only go to a certain place to find a prostitute or a sex trade worker? Um, I probably would have been willing to pick up someone on the street. Um, th that's what I initially tried to do, uh, if you read the book unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once, it, it, once, once, I, once I had my experience with that first escort, um, that seemed to be a more sensible way to go. I'm not sure why, uh, but yeah. Mm. And I'm assuming now you're committed to it oh, in yeah. some way. And well, you're committed to one person, and I don't want to give it all away, but <laughs> this one person is a sex trade worker or an escort. Mm -hmm. uh, you still, her name is Denise, you still pay her? Uh, yes, I've been seeing the same prostitute, only one prostitute. Well, I've been seeing her for eight years now, and I've been monogamous with her for seven years now. For seven years, why? She's a really nice person, and I just, uh, I realized I don't, well, part of it is because of her. I mean, she hasn't gotten out of the business, but, but mm -hmm. in a way she has. It's complicated. Right, <laughs> it, but uh, she doesn't, uh, mind if you don't commit to her or tell her you love her madly or any of that because we all have this romantic idea in our heads that when your prince comes along you have this romantic love you ever after relationship and that's yeah. what life should be all about yeah I don't think she sees me as being her romantic prince definitely not um, she does but she tells me she has feelings for me. She, she likes me as mm -hmm. a person, definitely. And I would say I do have very strong emotions for her. Um, I would, well, I would say that I love her, right. but uh, not in a romantic way. Okay, and what does that mean? I, it certainly means that I, I have no intention of getting married to her or, um, or living with her or there isn't going to be any sort of formal commitment. I'm not going to mm -hmm. promise to, to love her forever. Right. Um, I, I don't see the sense in that. Well, as you point out in here many times, just because somebody is in a monogamous or a committed relationship or a marriage, it doesn't mean that that someone is getting a lot of sex. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, it's not a guarantee, mm -hmm. as you know so well, and as anybody in a relationship knows so well, it's about more than that, mm -hmm. and sometimes it is about a lot of sex and oftentimes it's not or it goes away or the desire goes away and then you have to put up with all of the other daily stuff mm -hmm. yeah I would I think probably well I, I'm, I'm certain that this um, eight-year relationship I've had with Denise is probably is more satisfying than you know a lot of marriages are 
mm -hmm. probably for both of us. Sure. Well, this book makes you examine love, ask, is it overrated? Is romance overrated? Uh, is paid sex that much different than unpaid sex? Mm -hmm. But more deeply, you want us to ask questions about sex trade workers and rights, uh, legalization of prostitution or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, uh, well, there, there is a debate going on about the difference between legalizing, legalizing prostitution and decriminalizing it. Mm -hmm. um, I see the difference as being an issue of licensing. Um, prostitution, I don't think, should be something you have to get a license for. The idea of having to get a, a license uh, to have consensual uh, sex with other adults mm -hmm. seems offensive to me. But if you have a license, then you pay the state, I'm assuming, uh, yeah. tax and all of that, and then but you can, the state controls you, you pretty can, much. You can pay taxes without having to get a license. I don't have a license to mm -hmm. be a cartoonist, but I still pay my taxes. Okay, take me to the Nevada brothels, because I think you made a good point about what goes on in Nevada at the brothels uh, with the women mm -hmm. uh, who are sex trade workers. Yeah, this, this, the state there is very concerned about getting their taxes, and so they do control the women in a very, uh, in a way that seems almost authoritarian to me. Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're confined to these brothels and um, there are all these rules about that they have to follow and if they want to go shopping in the nearby town then they have to have a minder go with them. And it's, uh, whereas in comparison with the way that Denise lives, she has she's completely free. She doesn't have to. She's not confined to a particular brothel. She could work in one if she mm -hmm. wanted to, but if she chooses to work, um, I, I don't know. I, I, well, in the, the the legal way in Canada is to go to the client's home. She, uh, you know, she's she um, can decide how many clients she wants to see, who she wants to see. If she doesn't like a client, she doesn't have to be with them. Um, she just she lives a much more free life than right. the, 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 the than the Nevada Bravo. Sure, Bravo which as you know so too. well isn't true for all sex trade workers. Right. There are girls who are are trafficked, mm -hmm. and human trafficking is a problem. Yes, uh, there are girls who have pimps who they're terrified of, and they can't get out uh, from under this. Do they have the option? Yes. Do they have the will? Probably not. There are drug addicts in the trade who have problems because they need drugs and if they get out they won't get their drugs. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a horrible seamy side of this, but you're saying there's also the other side. Uh, I Yeah, I, I see another side, a mm -hmm. side where women choose the work and right. uh, if they don't like it, then they get out. Mm -hmm. as and many do. Oh, yeah. I, as a female, I can't imagine a any woman chooses this. But that's judgmental, I know it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't imagine. It, like if you had any other choice, even maybe cleaning toilets, mm -hmm. it would be better. And Denise chose the work, and when mm -hmm. she wanted to get out of it, she, she got out of it. No mm -hmm. one forced her to stay in it. Right. Uh, paying for it, a comic strip memoir about being a John. Chester Brown, our guest, will come back.